OK, uh, do you know what question it was? Ah. OK. So generally, very high level explanation of what they want you to do here. Right? They want you to measure the uh, well complexity. Right? What is the effect of the uh, runtime of the output given the input? Right? So I'm looking at the first one, and I see that I'm giving it a list. Right? So the answer is going to have to be uh, a function of the length of that list. Right? So your answer should always be a function of like some measure of the size of your input. Right? And size may be different, but it seems that every time we've given you a list to make it easy. Right? So I think each time here it's going to be the complexity is going to be some function of n where n is the length of the list. OK, so what is this doing? This is going from, OK, so this is counting by powers of 2 to the length of the list. So given a list of length 4, how many iterations do I run here? So you start at uh, 1, and then 2, and then 4 is already on the boundary, and it's a less than. So you do 2. If they give you a list of length 4, you do 2. If they give you a list of length 8, you do 16. So if they give you a list of length 2 to the power of n, you do how many iterations? Yeah, it's n. But you see how we went? So 4 was 2 squared, 8 was 2 cubed, 16 is 2, 4. And you answered correctly in each of those cases, 2, 3, 4. How did we get the n off of the 2 to the power of n? Losing a log. So what's the complexity of this? Yes. OK. All right, so that's how many iterations will occur if the, if the input is length n. OK, so that's basically what they're asking you. Count, count the number, at least in this case, the question about complexity is equivalent to, to asking how many loops like our process process in here. Let's do the next one. Part did I six, skip part one? No, we did A. Part B. Okay, so these are uh, embedded loops or nested loops, which use, which has an effect on the complexity of multi multiplying, right? So if you have a loop that repeats ten times and you have an inner loop that repeats five times, you've in fact done something fifty times, right? So here the complexity is going to multiply. So I have an index. OK, so they're basically just have two in indexes which are going to count to the list of L, uh, to the length of L. No, no, no. One is counting to the length of L, and one counts to the upper index. So that's still, uh, OK, so we don't want an exact, we could count it exactly, right, because it's, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to n. And the sum of the first n numbers is n, n plus 1 over 2. And that's o order n squared. Right? So you could, you could do it exactly. Right? But you can look at this, see two embedded loops both going to n, worst case, n squared. Yeah. What about this one? OK, they're trying to trick you. What does this mean? Right, so we're talking about embedded loops. But this embedded loop, OK, so when I run a loop a thousand times, right, that's equivalent to just writing that statement a thousand times, right, one after another. So that, that's technically not a loop, right? We've done a constant number of things, right? So the outer loop is constant, right? I would even try to trick you worse. I would make that number bigger. I'd be like 10 to the power of 50, right? It doesn't matter. It's huge, still constant. So the outer thing is constant, and the inner thing counts to n. So we really have a thousand times we've done something that cost n. We don't care about coefficients, n. OK. D. Uh, we count to, did I just do D? I'm getting so lost. C, OK, no, D. OK, so the outer one again goes to a thousand. But how does that differ? Oh, oh, while index. OK, so that one's also constant, right? Because I can replace the inner loop 
like I can just replace that index with a thousand, and that's obviously an upper bound, right? So I'm upper bounded by a constant number of operations. So the whole thing is bounded by a constant number of operations. Uh, what about this last one? You tell me. Well, I enjoy this coffee that this A plus student has brought me. You should write your student numbers on these things. Right. Well, I see that the outer loop is walking to the length of n, right? So we're going to have an n. We've already found an n. What about the inner loop? No. Nope. What's the inner loop's complexity first? We're doubling the index, right? Hmm? We're doubling the index. We've already done that question. Have you forgotten? Log base 2n, right? I'm doubling the index, right? That's like, how, well, is it double? Hold on. Double, double, double. No, 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 no. No, 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 I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Wait, did, did we double or did we take an exponent? Yeah, we took an exponent. Okay, so what's the effect of doubling to a number? Hmm? I take it back. I think it is O of n squared. But that's what I'm a little bit more unsure about. Because we're counting by doubling. So we're going like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Wait, that's th those powers of 2. Wait, so I'm, if I'm, hold, hold on. If I'm doubling from 1, that's essentially like saying, like having a power of 2. 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, so the answer to this question is either n log n or n squared. Now I'm thinking it's n log n, because when I'm doubling, right? So if I start at 1 and double, that's the question. How many times can I double from 1 to n? And I think the answer to that is log base 2n, right? So I think this is n log base 2n, right? OK, but maybe double check that one. Yeah. Part A, this one? OK, so given a list of length n, OK, we're, we're uh, this function is basically walking an index to the length of, the, uh, length of that list. So if, if I were to walk it one step at a time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that would be O n, right? Because I have, to make, I have to take n many steps forward to traverse the list. Now, this is not saying increment by one step. It's saying increment by 2 to the power of the index. So my first step is 1. My next step is 2. My step after that is 4. And my step after that is 8. Right, so I'm going to make much less than n steps down, right? n unit steps down. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm walking by, I'm stepping by bigger and bigger gaps. Right? And because I'm stepping by bigger and bigger gaps, um, the, the actual number of steps I take is log base 2 of n, right? if, you, if you were to count it. Right? So how many times can I double 1 to get to 8? Right? So if I, were, if I were to walk from 1 to 8, that's 8 steps. If I were to move by 1. If I were to move by doubling, so I walk one step, and then two steps, and then four steps, and then I'm done. So in the first case, I walk eight steps. In the second case, I walk three. I can, I can now move to 16. Right? In the first case where I walk by one, I walk 16 steps. In the second case, I walk one, then two, then four, then eight, and I'm at 16. So I walk in the, in the power case, I would take four steps. In the individual linear case, I take one step. Right? So it's just, uh, it's just the number of steps that I'm number of steps I'm taking to get to the end of the list, right? where every step is double the length of the step that you've taken, took before. Yeah? OK. Uh, what else do you want to do? I think that's it for that. Where do you guys weak? We don't have, yeah. Sure. I just d did one, actually. So oh, this one has Zelda in it. 
Write a new class characters that stores character objects organized by the game they came from. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Well, what do you mean organized by the game they came from? Zelda is in Super Mario. Oh, no, no, games. Games of Super Mario Brothers and Zelda. The characters of Super Mario Brothers is Koopa and Goomba. So can there not be a character that is, exists in two different games? Like, what happens if I put Mario Tennis into here? What happens? Huh? Oh. Uh. Okay, give you a string method, a representation method, and an enemy class. Oh, okay, so they want us to predict some output. Okay, so read the class while I get rid of a layer. That's, how, that's magic hands, right? I'm wrapping my old school. Okay, so we have a character object. It initializes a name and a game. It has a string method, a representation method, and there's also another class for an enemy, which we'll deal with later. What is displayed when the lines are entered on the console? So I create a character called CH. It's a character called Link from the game Zelda. So what is the string representation of, that, of CH return? So we look here, it's a string, and it should return Link from Zelda. Yeah? Uh, if I print, if I type ch, what's going to print? Okay, remember we have two methods, right? The string method and the representation. So the string method is what is going to print when you print the, uh, okay, so when you ask, <laughs> I should have told you that. So when you're asking for the string representation of that uh, class, it's going to return string. Right, so there are two ways to get the string representation of a class, by, by saying string or by printing. And I just said, I just showed you the print way. But it should be obvious that if you ask for this, to convert some, a class to a string, that you're going to be using its string method. Okay, so this is going to print out the representation, not the string, when you ask for it from the console. So what gets printed here? Yeah, character, tuple, uh, link, Zelda. Okay, so what does an enemy do? Okay, so I, CH is an enemy, it's a Goomba from Super Mario Brothers. If I ask for the string representation of it, it's going to return the fearsome Goomba from Super Mario Brothers. And if I ask for what its representation is, what is its representation? It doesn't have a representation, that is correct. But what, so what prints in that case? What is the default representation for a class? Hmm? Nope. Uh, F is of foo type. Oh. Well. Damn it. Okay, so F is a foo type. So if I hit enter, what's going to print? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, it basically just says you're a class. Right? This is an object of foo type. Right? Yeah, 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 just try to approximate it. Well, you, you can't write this, right? You'd have to guess the memory location, right? Um, yeah, just just write something like returns like foo object. Right? Just it just says this is a foo object. 
Yeah, well, you know, I'll be around for the markers this time, just keeping a close eye on them. Uh, okay, so we can now answer this. So what's going to print here? Yeah, it's going to print like uh, enemy object, basically. Yeah, yeah, and just guess a memory location. It better be correct. I'm going to check. Write a new class hero that extends character. Oh, I didn't teach you class inheritance, so skip. Uh, you don't need to know class inheritance, so don't worry about B. You'll learn class inheritance next year. We focused more on the magic methods, right? So um, you will have to write magic methods for arithmetic. So please know how to do that. You remember that? Yeah, we did. I did tons of problems. Like I, I focused most of our time in classes on arithmetic and that, and less than and magic methods for a reason, right? There's a high value object question on your exam. I don't know how to make this any more explicit to you, right? So please practice and please, please, pra please know how to write a magic method. Like I gave you some recommendations for practice. Do you guys remember what they were? Really took took my advice to heart. It seems. Um, why don't you try writing a class that can work with like uh, vectors of size 2. Right? You should be able to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, dot product, stuff like that. The other one I said to do was complex numbers, which would be an, another good one to implement. It's basically equivalent to implementing um, these vectors of length 2. Right? But anyway, pick, pick, pick your favorite mathematical object and go for it. Uh, okay, so not that. Uh, any, okay, so what else do you want to do then? Because like, uh, if we're all done, I wanted to write some questions on the board that none of you will be able to answer yet because you don't have the techniques. And so I wanted to give you an idea of the type of questions that you're going to be able to answer at the end of next year that you can't answer currently because you don't have enough tools yet. Right? It's not enough to know how to program. You also need to know how to like all the techniques we have for solving problems that are difficult. Um, so. Why don't you guys ask me the questions that you have, and maybe I'll just take the last 10 or 15 minutes to do some, 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 some stuff that's fun. On what? I couldn't find any on the old ones. Like the only magic methods that they ha were asked to write in other years were the string and representation. Like if you, can, we, if you can just give me a mathematical object, we can code it up. Uh, like we can make a class that can like add two by two matrices together or something like that. What do you guys want to do? Tell me, or I'll just I'll end it. I'll throw this hot coffee in your faces. Right. Nothing. No, no one wants anything. Right. You can show us the, the Okay, so let's make, okay, it's not a bad idea. And then hopefully I'll have enough time to end the class. Okay, so this, we're going off book, right? So now that, that's just us going crazy. Matrix.py. Okay, so let's create a class for a two by two matrix. So what are we going to what are we going to need for this? So what what's our desire? So this is a two by two matrix. So what are we going to need to store? And this this is how you have to work with objects. You have to say, well, what is it I want to do with my object before we design it? Well, we're going to need we're going to need to do stuff like multiply uh, A B C D E F. H, right? So we're going to need to add these things together. Uh, we're going to need to negate these things. We're going to have to take the inverse of these things, maybe multiply these things, and then maybe divide. Maybe. Right? I need to be able to access the individual elements of the matrix, right? So we need some type of way to index it into this thing. So how do you want to store this? We can do it any way we want. It could be a list of lists. We can just have uh, four attributes of the class. Right? So 
first position, second position, third position, fourth position, right? Um, okay, so let's, well, how do you want to represent this thing? List of lists? Okay. Okay, so let's create an initializer. That takes self. And how are you going to instantiate this? Well, maybe we'll take a list of lists. Okay, so there's uh, x's. So self dot x's. Uh, you know what? Let's give it a list of lists and then use the attribute representation. Um, okay, so we have four positions. How, how should I name them? Ah, uh, yes. Good idea. Top left, top right, uh, bottom left, bottom right. Okay. So this should be x is at the first position, first position, x is at the first position, second position, x is at the second position, first position, and x is at the 1, 1. Okay. That's a good start. Uh, let's write a representation so we can look at this. That takes self. This is a magic method. So how do you want to print this? I think I basically want to do something like, okay, let's see, self dot uh, a b c d is equal to self dot t l self dot. I'm going to use this line a lot because I hate writing these selfs. B R. Okay, so I want to return something that looks matrix C. Um, right, so maybe I do. I'll do A, then I'll do a tab, and then I'll do B, then I'll do a new line, then I'll do C, and a tab, and then D. A, B, C, D. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Uh, so let's come up with just a simple 2 by 2. Okay, let's uh, make a matrix object. Let's see how this looks like. Neat, huh? Looks like a matrix, kind of. Wait, why is my stuff left justified and the other thing right justified? No, okay, that seems fine. All right, that's about as, bad, as good as I'm going to do today. Uh, maybe less than a tab. One, two, one, two. Hmm? Mm. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. Neat. Okay. Uh, let us do the addition. Self and other, right? You need two objects for this guy. So how do I add these things together? You just add the individual elements like this. Yeah, something like that sensible. It's called pointwise addition. It's the, it's the easiest of them all. So I'm just going to grab this line, E, F, G, H, so what should I return? You guys have to tell me what I return here. Otherwise, I'm very worried. OK, something of type matrix. It's a good start. Right? Good, good. You're thinking like a programmer now. You thought from the outside in. right? I need to return a matrix. Good, matrix. OK, what is the matrix of? List of lists. Put the list of lists in. Right? That's good. 
Someone has learned how to abstract. You may leave. Here's your A+, plus, right? <laughs> yeah. Here's your A+, plus and your free pass into post. Yeah, see, I, I know how to freak you guys out now. I just have to say post. Right? I don't even know what it means, right? A plus B. Yeah, you guys should have been born when I was born. Then there would, be, there would have been no competition to get into computer science. People didn't even know what computer science was. We're all nerds back then. When it was like a bad thing to be a nerd. Right? I know it's all trendy now. Right? G plus H. Okay. I think this will work. Did I not follow my thing I wrote on the board? Oh, right. That was totally wrong. Uh, well, I'm just going to erase it. I was just so happy that someone learned something. A plus E. It's like when a comet comes. Uh, C plus G, D plus H. Okay. Actually, why don't I just do this? Uh, three, four. Minus seven, eight. Okay, there's A, there's B. Did that work? Oh boy. That seems okay to me. Okay. So what do we need to get subtraction? Yeah, but what's the better way of doing subtraction? Okay, which means we need what? I think that was this. So what should the negation be of this? Well, let's do it the abstract way. What should I be returning? Matrix. Matrix of what? Of lists of lists comprised of what? Yeah. Uh, well, it... Oh, there you are. You're, uh, it defines what the negation of something should be. Right? It defines the, if you have an object plus, uh, there's going to be another object. So if you have A, there should be another object minus A, so that A plus minus A gives you the zero of the field. Right? Yeah, so that neg, like, if I didn't define this neg, like, this wouldn't work. Right? That, that method is required for this to know what a unary negation is. Is supposed to do, because uh, like currently, if I did this, it would say I don't, I don't know. You don't have a unary subtraction yet, All right? So now if I reload it, so here's a great test for if our negation works. Hmm. be the same thing with the signs reversed, yeah? Hmm. Great. Now, I can do one more, but you're just going to have to trust me. How should we define the multiplication of two matrices? I'm surprised you guys don't already know this. I have to learn this in high school. How did I, how do I turn on these lights? Okay. You guys say, what should it mean to multiply two matrices together? Oh my god, why did you guys say something? Oh, I, oh, I, I know how to do that. <laughs> oh, see, <it's> <laughs> what? what? This is basically a white screen, right? It's like, this is not making any sense. How come the left side of the class seems to be understanding everything? <laughs> Has to do with being able to see. Jeez, and they're all like complaining that their light projectors misaligned. You guys don't even get to see anything. Okay, well, I have to do that because I need the light back. Well, how do I do that? Oh, 
How do I get the middle one? There we go. The middle ones have to go down, and the other ones have to go up. It's like, what if you guys designed the light switch? <laughs> well, what happens if the light switch moves sideways? Right? <laughs> what happens if I pull the light switch out of the wall? Right? What, what should happen in that case? Right? <laughs> what happens if the light switch is red? <laughs> then what do I do? Right? At least now you can appreciate the frustration that I feel. Uh, okay, so this is how you multiply two matrices together. Right? You have... A, B, C, D times E, F, G, H is going to be this matrix. Okay. So it's really I'm going to put in here the uh, dot product. Do you guys know what the dot product is? Of the, uh, so this is the first row, first column. Zeroth row, zeroth column. But first and zeroth are the same. So what goes in here is the dot product of the first row of this and the first column of this. And so this is the first row, second column. So what goes here is the dot product of the first row times dot product of second column. And so it's basically you find your position, you do this, right? So the, the dot product here you need to do the dot products of those two things. And so this is going to be AE, yes, thank you, plus uh, BG. This one here is going to be uh, a, plus e -H. a what? A F plus G H. A F B H. B H. This is going to be C E plus D G. This is going to be. Thank you. D H. Okay. And that actually extends right to all cases. Well. It extends <laughs> with some caveats. Something like that, yeah. But we'll leave it to your linear algebra teacher. Um, okay, so I'm just going to borrow these things again because I'm sick of writing selfs and others. What do I return? Well, it's a matrix I have to return, and it's a special one. See, I could do something really cool if I defined dot products, like multiplication could be defined very nicely rather than hard-coded like this. But in any case, A, E plus B times G, A times F plus B times H, uh, C times E plus D times G. <laughs> I feel so bad for the other side of the class now. Um, C times F plus D times H. Okay. Even though it's still not that great. Okay. Alright, see if this works. A times B. Great. Okay. Now I have to tell you what the negate, uh, the inverse of a matrix is, which I can also do uh, because it's the two by two case. Okay. So, what property does the inverse have to satisfy? Hmm? No, 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 no. Higher level than that. Like, what do, what does the, what property does the inverse satisfy itself among all objects? Well, what does an inverse mean? Okay, so what does the negation of something mean? Okay, so we have plus, right? And we have negation, the unary negation, right? So this means the property that this has is that a plus minus a has to be zero, okay? Now, what about for multiplication? We have this and we have this. What does this have to satisfy? Wow. One. <laughs> this also has to be zero. Because what was our zero here in this object? Hmm? 
Hmm? What was our zero? Well, it, it's this. This is our zero. Oh, yeah. Zero matrix. Right? So you can't just say one. Well, that, that's the right answer, but that's why I put quotes around it, right? Like, what is, what is the one? What matrix can we multiply any other matrix by? Well, that's unfair because I have to tell you what. Oh, wait, I did tell you matrix multiplication. Um, so what is it? What, what, what matrix will leave every other matrix alone when I multiply by it? Yes. 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 No. Wait. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what happens when I multiply A, B, C, D by this? You're going to get A plus 0, uh, 0 plus B, 1, uh, C plus 0, and uh, 0 plus D. Yeah. Right? So we have a 1. What looks like this, which means if I define this inversion operation, that I can test that my inversion operation is working by doing this. Right? Doing a plus minus a was a good way to confirm that our negation was working. It should, be, it should be zero in all cases. In a similar way, we can check that our inversion is working by checking this property here. Okay, so now I'll tell you how to take the inverse of the matrix. Right, so the inverse of A, B, C, D is this matrix. 1 over, oh shit, do I forget? What's the determinant of this? A, B minus B, C. Yes, okay. And then I what? I have to switch? Shit, I forget. I switched one of the diagonals and I negate one of the other diagonals. But which one's which? Oh my gosh. A and D is switch, okay. Uh, and then this becomes minus. Yeah. Okay, so just, you don't have to trust me. I'm going to program this and then show you that it has the desired property and then I can let you guys go. After saying a, a heartfelt goodbye to all of you. And so don't, don't run off too much. I'm teaching some second year courses next term. We don't have assignments for next year yet. But my name won't change, so you can always look for verbic, right? That, that's something that I can guarantee. Uh, what was the thing for inversion? Was it like this? Or no, it can't be that. Inverse, invert. Someone. You guys are supposed to know this, right? <laughs> What's the magic method for inversion? Invert. Thank you. And I need to take one thing, and now I need to return the inversion. OK. I, I can totally do this. Uh, so the inverse is what? I need to return a matrix. That matrix needs to do, I need, I need that. OK, I need a something else, which is a times b minus b times c. And then everything needs to be divided by, oh, this may not work. Well, we'll see. A, divi a divide equal e, b divide equal e, c divide equal e, d divide equal e. OK. I wouldn't have had to do this if I, if I had defined what it meant to multiply a number by a matrix. Then I, could have then I could have just multiplied this fraction in. So this is not as robust as it could be. Um, so the matrix should be what? D, B, no, D minus B, uh, minus C, A. Okay, hopefully this will work. It won't because that needs to be a list of lists. Okay, there's my AA. Hopefully I didn't pick a singular matrix. What's the inversion? Oh, inverse AA. What is AA times D? Well, yeah, you should. This is, this is the problem now with floats, right? Even doing the most basic type of matrix arithmetic is throwing a spanner in the works. Because this should be equal to the identity matrix, but I doubt it will be. We're going to get something like 0.99 down the diagonal. 
Well, that's totally wrong. Oh, no, it's not, because it's only off by a multiple, right? Divide the whole thing by 0.33, and then you get ones across the bottom. So we have a scalar multiple of the answer. We just have to normalize this somehow. But that should be close enough. Well, that, but why? Why? Why, did I, why am I off by a factor of 3? Did I do a, my determinant wrong? Let's check my function again. I shouldn't be off by a factor of 3, but I am. Oh, yeah, this is wrong. Let's try again. Great. Okay, so I shouldn't delete this. I'll post this. Or you guys can just watch the video and reconstruct it. But uh, ah, it's not bad. Okay, that was a fun example. All right. So who asked that class question? Was it you? Satisfied? Okay, anyway, so this, uh, this is a class method. You should understand it. Something similar is going to be on your exam. Um, so please get it. It's a freebie. Where I'm, trying to, I'm trying to tell you that it's going to be there, right? So that's, that's as much as I can do. So anyways, this is the last class. I just want to thank you guys for being good students, right? Um, having shitty students is really... It, it, it hurts me personally to have bad students, but you guys weren't bad students. You guys were good students. This was a good semester. I wish you luck in the rest of your career, and hopefully I can see more of you uh, in future classes of mine. So I have an office hour today and next week. Uh, you guys have a really uh, restful break, and uh, may you have clarity on your exams. I'm rooting for all of you, so thank you. Yeah. One sec.